In this video, I'm going to show how you can use your previous knowledge about sketching polynomial functions to solve nonlinear inequalities, mainly polynomial inequalities and rational inequalities. Let's look at this example directly. For this example, we need to solve for the polynomial inequality that negative 3x squared minus 2x plus 8 is bigger than 0 which means that we need to look for regions of x values that will satisfy this inequality expression. So by using the graphical method, we will actually first graph the function that equals to the left-hand side of this e expression. We need to graph the quadratic function fx equals to negative 3x squared minus 2x plus 8. And for this graph, only the x-intercepts and the shape need to be accurate. In other words, the y-intercept, the vertex, the axis of symmetry, or any other aspect of the graph doesn't have to be accurate. So, first we need to find the x-intercept by factorizing this quadratic function. You can use the quadratic formula if you want to as well. So we can determine the x-intercept to be for third 0 and negative 2 0. And then, because this is a quadratic function with the leading coefficient negative 3, which is smaller than 0, therefore, this shape of the function is a downward U shape. So with that information, as I said, that's all we need. And then we can sketch this graph. Don't forget the x-axis is the collection of all the points with y value of 0. And here, as you can see, we're looking for function value that is bigger than 0. In other words, we are looking for function values that are above the x-axis on this graph. Therefore, to solve this polynomial inequality problem using the graphic method, the step 2 is simply to read from this graph regions of x values that will make the function value bigger than 0, or we're looking for the part of the graph that is above the x-axis. So we know these two are the x-intercepts with a function value of 0. Therefore, we can easily tell that this part of the graph has values that is above the x-axis. And we're, we need to read this region here because that gives us the solution to this problem, which says that x must be between negative 2 and 4 thirds because that's the x value that will make this function value be bigger than 0 or above the x-axis. Or you can rewrite this into simply negative 2 is smaller than x, smaller than 4 thirds. And that is the answer to this polynomial inequality problem. Let's look at another example. Here we have 2x to the third power plus 5x squared plus 2x plus 7 smaller or equal to 7. Remember when we were using the graphical method from the previous screen, we were using the x-axis which corresponds to a function value that equals to 0. So in this case, we need to make the right-hand side the magic number of 0. Therefore, let's first rewrite this inequality to be 2x to the third power plus 5x squared plus 2x smaller or equal to 0. This is exactly the same as our ori original inequality. And now we can graph this function 2x to the third power plus 5x squared plus 2x. Again, we only need to be accurate with its x-intercepts, which are negative 2, 0, negative 1, half, 0, and 0, 0 as well as the shape of this polynomial function. This is the polynomial function of a high degree. So we first use the leading coefficient test. Leading coefficient is positive, right tail goes up, and then we look at the degree, which is 3, which is an odd number. Therefore, the left tail goes to the opposite side. And because there is no repeated 0, therefore the graph will cross the x-axis every time. Based on all this information, and here's a sketch for this function. Again, only the x-intercepts and the shape of the function are important for this problem. Again, we're going to use the x-axis as a guideline to help us solve this inequality. 
And this is again the reason why we had to make that rearrangement of the inequality expression so that the right hand side is the magic number of zero. Otherwise, we cannot use the x axis as a guideline. So this is smaller or equal to zero indicates function values that are either below or on x axis. Therefore, to solve this inequality, we only need to read from this graph regions of x values that will make this a function graph either fall below or on the x axis. Our three x intercepts are points that are on x axis. So what's below? This part is below, and this part is also below the x axis. Therefore, we read the x value corresponding to these regions, and that's the answer to this inequality. X is either smaller or equal to negative 2, or x is between negative 1 half and 0, including both ends. To solve for a rational inequality like this one, first we need to recall an important property of numbers that if two numbers, a and b, that a divided by b is bigger than 0, which means that a and b must be of the same sign. They can both be positive or they can both be negative. Therefore, their product must also be bigger than 0. And if a divided by b is smaller than 0, that means that a and b are of the opposite signs. Either a is positive, b is negative, or a is negative, b is positive. Either way, their product must also be smaller than 0. Because of this, in order to solve this rational inequality, instead, we're going to actually solve for this polynomial inequality. They are not the same, however, they do have the same solutions based on our analysis on the previous screen. Therefore, this becomes the same problem we have been doing. We want to graph the function. This is the third degree polynomial function. It was partially factorized already. To continue factorize it is not that hard. And also, we only care about the x-intercepts as well as the general shape of this polynomial function. This is a third degree with a leading coefficient that's positive. Therefore, right tail goes up, left tail goes down, and there's no repeated zero. Therefore, all crosses. Based on that, here's a sketch of the polynomial function. Pay attention here. This is not the graph for the rational function. However, we're using this to solve the rational inequality by solving the polynomial inequality that have the same solution. So again, we want to look for the regions of this graph that are above x-axis because we're solving for the polynomial function that is bigger than 0. Therefore, by reading the intercepts of this graph, we can determine that the solution to this problem is x is between negative 3 and positive 1 half, or x is bigger than 2. Again, this is the solution to the polynomial inequality, but also it is the solution to the rational inequality. Now let's look at this last example which looks almost exactly the same as the previous one, except here now we have a bigger or equal to zero sign. So we're going to use a similar approach as I introduced earlier. However, you have to be careful now because the denominator x minus 2 cannot be zero. Therefore, whatever solution you come up with, you want to make sure that x does not equal to 2. With that in mind, again, we're going to follow a similar approach. Instead of solving for this rational inequality, we're going to write a polynomial which equals to the numerator multiplied by the denominator, and we're going to solve for this polynomial inequality, that this polynomial function is bigger or equal to zero. Again, we're going to use the graphical method, and from this graph, 
we read the parts that are both above and are on the x-axis because now we're solving for the polynomial function that is bigger or equal to zero. From here, we can read that x is either between negative three and one half, including negative three and one half, because once again, the function value can be zero. However, the last part of this solution, x is bigger than two. Here, x cannot be two, even though that is the solution for the polynomial inequality, but that will not be the solution for our original rational inequality because simply the denominator cannot be zero.